What message are we sending when we sit down at the table with the number one state sponsor of terrorism? What message are we sending when we sit down with a country that is holding four Americans hostage? The United States of America does not surrender to a bunch of black robed, crazed clerics that want to see us destroyed. Well, powerful, forceful response by Colonel Alan West to the Iranian nuclear deal at a recent rally in New York City. Joining us now to explain his deep-rooted opposition to this bad nuclear agreement, the man himself, president of the National Center for Policy Analysis and Fox News contributor, Lieutenant Colonel Alan West. Great speech. Number one state sponsor of terror. They get $150 billion. They get to build uh, ICBMs, spin their centrifuges, get conventional weapons, and declare that uh, we're Satan and they're going to wipe Israel off the map. What did we get? Tell me one thing we got. Well, Sean, it's good to be with you. We got absolutely nothing. I think that the only thing that uh, the United States of America gets is an exhibit that will be in President Barack Obama's library wherever he decides to build it. But when you look at what just recently happened in the last 24 hours, Iran has announced that it is uh, producing a new short-range ballistic missile that has a range of about 315 miles. This week they will uh, finalize the agreement with Russia to get four of the S-300 uh, anti-aircraft missile systems which are state-of-the-art and which will make it very difficult to attack any type of nuclear sites there. And we know that uh, Mahmoud Abbas is traveling to Iran this week. I think that he's going there to see about how he can get funds that are going to be unfrozen uh, back to Iran. So we get absolutely nothing from this, but Iran becomes an economic power, a military power. The President Rouhani has said that they will sell weapons and they will buy weapons anytime from anyone, anywhere. I, I have a simple formula in life. One and one equals two. A squared, B squared equals C squared. Radical Islamic mullahs that say they want to wipe Israel off the map and destroy America, coupled with weapons of mass destruction, equals a holocaust. Am I wrong? Is that a likely conclusion? And why would this president allow that to happen? Well, you're very correct, and if you're a student of history, you can go back to 1936 to about 1939, and you can see what happened when the Western powers said that they were reticent about uh, avoiding war. And they sat back and they allowed Nazi Germany to become an economic power and a military power. Adolf Hitler took the Rhineland without firing a shot, a very industrial area. Then Adolf Hitler demanded the Sudetenland, Sudetenland, and he was given that because he said he wanted to protect ethnic Germans. And then he went and took Czechoslovakia. Of course, Neville Chamberlain went to Munich. An agreement was signed that was said to be peace in our time. But all it did was prove that any time weak nations go into agreements with belligerent, strong nations led by dictators and theocrats and autocrats those weak nations will lose and war is imminent and we, war we cannot don't have be the avoided. votes well, this is we're not going to be able to stop this are we obama has pretty much rigged it he's going to veto yeah. he's going to override a veto we can't they won't be able to override his veto in the end right well, we should have allowed this to be treated as a treaty and not as an executive agreement. And therefore, the onus would have been on President Obama to achieve two-thirds in the uh, Senate for that to be ratified. But now all he has to do is get one-third plus one, which comes out to be 34 senators. And I believe right now he's at 27. And the Republicans are going to have to get 291 in the House of Representatives so that they can have a veto-proof agreement. Yeah. But the Iranians are going to continue on. Uh, the United Nations is already unanimous. We, uh...